In 2003, Chilling Bernard Aguilado read a story in a local newspaper about a newborn tot that was thrown on the rubbish heap. The shocking news disgusted the 55-year-old and spurred her into giving the barely alive child the send-off she felt it deserved. Gilado, from the town of Puerto Montt, took the opportunity to do the right thing and organize the baby's burial. But getting hold of the body wasn't easy, in Chile. If the deceased is not claimed by a member of the family it's classed as human waste. Luckily Gilardo was able to plea with medical officials to allow her to take the child's body. Doctors then examined the child, and had to prove the baby had lived before it died. Six months later, 500 people turned out for the funeral of the baby, now named Aurora by Gilardo. Since Aurora's service. Gilardo has now adopted and buried three more children, Manuel, Victor and Cristobal. She is currently in the process of doing the same for another little girl, Margarita. Gilardo says she wants to give the children their dignity and wants them to have somewhere to rest in peace. Meet Lily Wan a former millionaire whose benevolent spirit led her to bankruptcy. The 47-year-old, from northern China's Hebei province, has adopted 72 abandoned children over the course of 19 years. She spent all her money caring for them, and is now facing a debt of over 2 million yuan. Li became rich during the 1980s, earning huge profits from her garment business and her investments in iron ore mining. It was around this time that she started taking in sick and disabled children who were abandoned by their parents, and orphan children whose parents had died in mining disasters. She used her sources of income to provide for all her adopted children. It was all smooth sailing for a few years, but as luck would have it, hard times fell upon Lee in 2008. Her mine was shut down due to urban developments, which cut down a major source of her income. She continued to care for the children by selling off all her properties and valuables, one at a time. Hen Elizabeth Diamond was diagnosed with stage 4 brain cancer in August 2014. She was worried about what would happen to her daughters after she died. Her best friend Laura Ruffino whom she had known since fifth grade, promised to adopt the girls if anything were to happen, and when Diamond, a single mother, passed away in April 2015, Rafino fulfilled her promise. Now, Rafino's family of four, along with her husband and two daughters, has doubled in size, and the local community in Orchard Park, NY is coming together to help them out. A You Caring campaign has already raised more than $90,000, of a $100,000 goal, to help the Ruffino Diamond family readjust. At age 92, Muriel Clayton became a mother again, having adopted the woman who's been her daughter for more than six decades just not officially. After her father passed away and her mother got ill, Mary Smith's older cousin Muriel took her in and raised her like her own. Smith grew up with Clayton's children, and they all thought of her as nothing less than their sister. Over the next 60 years, Clayton dreamt of making Smith a legal part of her family. Out of respect, she wouldn't do it until Smith's biological mother, who had been ill for decades, passed away. But love has no expiration date. In 2015, the two finally made it official, at the age of 92, Clayton formally adopted the 76-year-old Smith. Move over Rachel Dolez. There's a new person making us question our assumptions about race. Verda Bird has spent her entire life thinking she was black, but it was not until the age of 70 that she discovered she was white. 
She was born Jeanette Beagle in September 1942, but after her father walked out on the family and her mother became ill, she was placed into the adoptive care of a black couple as a toddler. Raised as the only child of Ray and Deadwinner Wagner in Newton, Kansas, she thought all her life that her biological parents were black.